Good morning. My name is Nancy Slocum. I am the director of a religious exploration for children and youth here at Tahoma Unitarian Universalist Congregation. This is our time for all ages. So uh, children can come on up to the computer screens in their homes to hear our time for all ages this morning. I also want to announce there will be no chill, uh, kids chapel after service today because of the congregational meeting. So we want all the parents to be able to uh, log in to the congregational meeting. Sometimes when we meet for our time for all ages, we talk about fun things and we hear about fun stories. And other times we are called upon to talk about things that are perhaps difficult to talk about, hard to talk about. Today is one of those days. It's important to understand though that when we talk about difficult topics here at church, it's because we believe it is something that is so important that it's okay that if we feel a little or maybe a lot uncomfortable with it. Sometimes it's our discomfort that helps us to learn some very important things. When we talk, we want to talk and speak the truth. We don't want to hide it. And we want to remember that we always come from a place of love. In our service today, we are talking about and hearing about racism. And racism in our country is a very complicated issue that is sometimes hard to figure out. It's such a big part of the way we are together that sometimes we don't even clearly see when it's happening. Racism, very simply put, is when people treat people differently based on the color of their skin. You know, if you look at a group of people, look around, you see all different skin colors. There are people whose skin is very dark, almost black. There are people whose skin is very pale and almost white. And there are all shades of colors in between, pink and tan and brown and mahogany. There's probably hundreds of different shades. But when we talk about different races and when we talk about racism, we often focus our talk on people who are black, white, brown. And the very truth of the matter is that no matter what our skin color, we're all the same. Just like different hair colors, whether it's gray like mine or blonde or brown or red or somewhere in between or different eye colors, hazel, blue, brown, gray. There are different skill colors, skin colors, but it really should make no difference because first and foremost, we are people sharing our lives together. The problem is that starting hundreds of years ago in our country and even before that, even before our country was founded, Many people had a belief that people with black or brown skin weren't worthy of the same rights as people with white skin, that they weren't worthy of respect the same way people with white skin were worthy of respect. And laws and rules were made that treated people differently based on their skin color. For instance, there was a time in our country when black people were not allowed to vote. There was a law against it. They weren't allowed to have a say in who our president was or our senators or our mayors. They weren't allowed to vote on our laws. And I think I may hear some of you out there saying, well, that's not fair. I can always count on the kids to know when something isn't fair. And you're right, because we understand that skin color doesn't determine a person's worth. And it wasn't just the laws that treated people differently how people were with one another, how they interacted with one another was affected by skin color. There were people who believed that white people are better than brown or black people. And so they treated people as not being important, as not being deserving of the same kind of kindness and compassion as white people. And sadly, this way of being 
This way of treating people differently because of the color of their skin has been passed on generation after generation. And now it's so embedded in who we are and the way we are with one another that we might not even realize all the ways it affects us. Remember, I said at the beginning, this is a challenging problem and it's gonna take a lot of work. It can be hard to see it, racism, but if we keep our eyes open, we will see it. And sometimes we just can't miss it. You may be aware that right now in our country, there are a lot of people who are speaking out about racism. There are protests and marches going on where people are saying, this needs to change. The protests began a few weeks ago after a man, a black man, was killed by police when they were arresting him. His name was George Floyd. And they were arresting him because they believed he had spent a counterfeit or a fake $20 bill in the store. And when they arrested him, they had him face down on the ground in handcuffs and they held him down. Three police officers held him down and another police officer stood by as a witness. And of the three police officers who held him down, one kneeled on George Floyd's back and another one kneeled on his neck. And they held him down for nearly nine minutes, even when he told them, I can't breathe. They held him down, kneeling on him, even as his body went limp, as he lost consciousness, and as he died, because he couldn't breathe, because police officers were kneeling on him. I wish I could say that this is the only time that this has happened, but it's happened many, many times in the past when someone has died at the hands of police. And many of those times, it has been a black or brown person. In fact, only a few months ago, right here in Tacoma, a man named Manny Ellis, also a black man, died as police were arresting him and held him down. And he too called out saying, I can't breathe. It is hard to talk about people dying, isn't it? And it's harder because the deaths seem to be linked to racism, something we know is wrong and something we want to change. The protests and demonstrations happening now are happening because people are using their voices to speak out. Perhaps you have attended a protest or joined a march with your family. People are using their voices to speak out about what happened, to speak out against racism and demand that changes be made. And as Unitarian Universalists, we are called to use our voices. Our seven principles remind us of this. We talk about our principles here in church and we talk about our principles in our classes. Our principles are those guidelines for us to live by, reminders of how we want to be in the world. Our first principle says, that we believe that each and every person is important. We see worth and dignity in every person. We also say that people should be treated fairly with compassion and equity. Racism goes against these principles. Racist behavior does not treat people fairly. Racist behavior does not treat people with compassion. And our sixth principle says that we believe in working for a peaceful, fair, and free world, one with liberty and justice for all. Working for a peaceful world means working. And this is why I say we as Unitarian Universalists are called to use our voices. How do we do this? Remember, you have a voice. Even young children have a voice and you can decide to use it. 
If you see something going on that seems like it's racist behavior, you can say something. Maybe you observe a classmate making fun of somebody because of the color of their skin. You can say, hey, man, that's not cool. That's not okay. And if you can't say it directly, you can get help from your parents or another trusted adult. You can speak up. Your voice is important. And when you speak up, you are helping to make our world a better place. You may choose to use your voice in other ways. You may hear about things in our communities that need to change and you might write a letter or draw a picture about it and send it to people who can make those changes. You may use your voice and join in in marches and protests, adding your voice to the thousands of others around you. You may use your voice to talk about racism with friends and family. And it can be a hard conversation to have, but it's an important one. And to net, together, you can learn more about racism and you can find ways to combat it. You can use your voice to say thank you. If someone brings to your attention some way that perhaps you have done something that appeared to be racist or felt racist to somebody, because the truth of it is, we all sometimes do something without thinking about it, and we don't even realize that it's considered racist. Remember, I told you this is complicated, and we might not see it all. But you can use your voice to tell that person, thank you. Thank you for helping me learn. And you can use your voice to say, I'm sorry. If you've done something that has hurt somebody, if you've done something that someone thinks was racist, you can say, I am sorry. I did not mean to do that. And I, I promise to learn from this and do better the next time. Your voice is important. Your voice can make a difference. Your voice can make our world a better place for everyone. Thank you for spending this time today. Even though these conversations can be difficult, we speak with love. And so as you leave, I remind you of the words we sing you out of the sanctuary with when you go to your classes. We hold you in our love as you go, as you go. May your hearts be at peace as you go. To nurture the spark of your precious life, we hold you in our love as you go. Thank you.